Hello guys, my name is Ferops, and recently I've been playing the Elder Scrolls Special Edition, and it's recently gotten me back into the Elder Scrolls mood, and I've been watching videos about Skyrim, and I've been watching other theories about Skyrim and the Elder Scrolls, and a couple people have made videos on this particular theory, but they didn't quite bring up the same evidence that I am. And so today, we're going to be talking about the possibility that Fallout is in the world of the Elder Scrolls. When you think of the world of the Elder Scrolls, some of the things that come to mind are the medieval stone architecture. You'll have swords and shields. You'll have medieval metal armor. And most importantly, magic. Now some of the areas that you'll encounter are the vast... Medieval woodlands, you'll have large deserts, rocky, snowy mountains, and tropical rainforests. Some of these ideas don't really compare well to the Fallout world, which is a barren wasteland lacking trees in any civilized architecture, radiation, and most importantly, firearms. When you think of the world of Nern, that's the world where the Elder Scrolls games take place. In case you didn't know, I'll have a nice handy map up there for you, for reference. You don't automatically think that it correlates to the Fallout world. After all, in the Fallout world, they have the same continents as we do. Well, interestingly enough, scientists have been hypothesizing recently that our current continents are beginning to shift. Now originally when the world was in fruition we had one giant landmass called Pangaea. Well the scientists in question have been hypothesizing that the continents are again going to shift into two supercontinents. And I will have that on the screen here. Now, ordinarily, you go, well, they still don't look like the Elder Scrolls games. Pause for a moment, and why don't we flip it, and I'll show you this picture here. You see? It looks quite similar. Now, in video game design, they have their own leisure, but you can't deny that it looks pretty similar, and it is very possible. Speaking of Nern, to some people's final nail in the coffin for the argument that Fallout somehow takes place before the events of the Elder Scrolls series is the fact that Nern has two moons orbiting the planets. Now, when you look to our actual planet skies, you'll notice that there's only one moon orbiting our planet. Now, that's both correct and incorrect, because recently, in 1986, scientists have found another orbiting moon that follows our planet. Now it's called Cruthine. It's about five kilometers in diameter, or about three miles long, and it follows a slightly different orbital path than our own moon. It's one of the few space rocks in space that actually orbits the sun like the Earth in a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning it takes about 365 days to orbit the sun. Some of the few things that do this are the Earth and the moon, and maybe a few asteroids, but this is pretty significant. Now, scientists theorize in about 5,000 years or so that the asteroid or mini-moon, Cruthine, is going to get captured by Earth's gravitational field, and it's actually going to become attached like our own moon. Like I said in the previous segments in the video, the events of the Elder Scrolls series may take place thousands upon thousands of years after the events of Fallout, and it is quite possible that the continents could shift in a few thousand years, especially if hundreds of thousands nuclear warheads went off, it could really alter the seismic activity in plate tectonics. The same way could be said for the moon. It is entirely possible that after the continental shift takes place, it could be five to ten thousand years in the future, 
and by that time, Cruth 9 could be a part of our orbiting system. Some of the biggest differences between the Elder Scrolls series and the Fallout series is the use of magic. Some questions that you could pose is, where is the technology in the Elder Scrolls series? Where is the magic in Fallout? Well, the good news is we have evidence of both in each game. In the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you can find Dwarven Centurion Masters that actually use technology. And in the Fallout series, you have evidence of magic through the use of two characters in Fallout 4. Inside the Nuka World DLC, you meet the character Oswald the Magnificent. Now, this ghoul is not an ordinary ghoul. He actually possesses real magic. He even says so, and you can actually see some examples of it. He is able to heal himself. He's able to heal his fellow ghouls, and he's also able to revive his fellow ghouls. Not only that, he's able to appear and reappear and disappear, all at the snap of his fingers. The second instance of magic we find in Fallout 4 is Lorenzo Cabot from the Cabot House quest. In 1893, Mr. Cabot traveled all the way to Arabia to find the lost city of Ubar. Well, to his surprise, he actually found the lost city of Ubar, and he discovered an ancient magical artifact. He placed the artifact on his head and it fused with his brain. It gave him an immortal serum to his blood, as well as a few unknown magical properties that is not disclosed. Mr. Cabot also buried the lost city of Ubar because he believed that it had more artifacts in the city. He buried the city in hopes to return one day to retrieve them for other uses. Now when the player of Fallout 4 meets Lorenzo Cabot, he has a choice to release him from the insane asylum or kill him. If you release him, he becomes your ally and he grants you the mysterious serum, which is expected to grant you immortality. And finally we have a bonus to this list, and that's the Nern route that a lot of people like to talk about that you find in the Pridwin. The interesting thing about this Nern route is the fact of the stories it tells you in the lore. In the archives it actually tells you that the soldiers would partake in Nern route, and it would actually grant them a little bit of health, but over time it actually damaged their health and make them go insane. The interesting connection to this and in Skyrim is the fact that a few NPCs tell you that they like to add nightshade to some of the beers and meads that you can find in the shopkeeps. For the final piece of evidence to this argument that the Fallout series takes place before the... Never mind that, that was just an Argonian arriving out of its hist swamp. That's right, this final piece of evidence that supports the theory that the Fallout series takes place before the Elder Scrolls series is the Argonians in their native land, Black Marsh. The interesting thing about the geography of Black Marsh is the fact that it is the thing in the Elder Scrolls series that is closest in resemblance to a Fallout game. It is uninhabitable to all except for the Argonians. The land is so poisonous that the air to breathe is deadly, and the water to drink is also deadly. An excerpt from the Elder Scrolls lore states this. Black Marsh is also subjected to a unique type of rain, sometimes referred to by the region's inhabitants as hist piss. Often accompanied by a heavy thunder and fog, it has been described as an inferno of foul-smelling, yellow-brown rain. Now... At first glance, it really does sound like a Fallout game. Fallout has irradiated lands, it has irradiated air, and it has irradiated water. And the rain in Fallout 4 is yellow. You can even find yellow irradiated fog that comes out in the game. The Argonians have developed a 100% disease immunity resistance, as well as gills and claws that allow them to have better hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and they can breathe underwater. This really does sound like the Mirelurks in the Fallout series.
I believe that this is the last or one of the last areas in the planet Nern that actually still has irradiated areas, and I believe Black Marsh is one of the last ones. So that's it guys, that's the end of the video, I really hope you enjoyed, please give me a like or a comment if you want to see another one of these in the future.